Welcome back to another uh, video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Today I'm at World Expo 2015 Milan and I'm inside the very innovative um, Angola Pavilion. I wanted to take you around and show you some of the sites. Okay, and first off you can see that it's a very colorful pavilion, particularly at night in terms of the lights here. And one of the things that I thought was very interesting is in the queuing area they have some um, interactive screens that you could look into and uh, it helped, I think, reduce the amount of time that you had to spend in the queue line just waiting. And you can see here, talking a little bit about the theme, food and culture, educate to innovate. And uh, one of the things you'll see inside will be some of the diversity of cuisines and regions in Angola. And the real highlight is this giant uh, video tower that is uh, absolutely massive, as you'll see, and, and really a, a great example of personalization of the, the cultural traditions here. Okay, so now I'm showing you some of the video that I took uh, during my uh, visit. And again, I, I think the theme here is quite important, and I'll just read you a little bit from the um, official guidebook. Uh, visitors will embark on an authentic journey of culinary discovery to understand how Angola's products are and can be used to implement healthier and more sustainable lifestyles while at the same time absorbing the culture and spirit of this nation, nation where women play a key role as the guardians of tradition. Educate to innovate. Age-old practices must be encouraged and combined with the best technologies for a path of all-round development that does not sacrifice the richness and diversity of Angola's cuisine. And you noted the emphasis there on the role that women play. And there have been some um, emphases within the uh, Expo uh, 2015 in terms of focusing on women's traditions. And certainly you could think about some cultures at the Expo, whether they're represented or not, maybe don't have a great track record in terms of the record, uh, in terms of women's rights and the role that women play in any of these issues we're talking about at, at the Expo or issues outside of these. And so I think the fact that they mention this in their thematic statement and that they feature women exclusively uh, on the video tile here, I think is a, a pretty marvelous statement um, about the focus on gender equality and gender issues. And certainly gender and some other political issues could be brought into the expo. Unfortunately, they they haven't been, at least in, in terms of my uh, uh, viewpoint and what I've analyzed uh, in the many pavilions that I've seen. So I did breeze by uh, some of the, um, there was a, a pretty interesting video wall there. So you can see that the feature here is to you go in this uh, circular pattern and there have been other pavilions certainly that have employed this uh, technique as well so it allows for queuing and I think it's a smart approach because essentially you want to cut down on the crowds and this is one way of doing it I personally like the pavilions a bit better that allow you to do something at your own pace the ones that have guides and docents though more pedagogical and more informative uh, in some respects, unfortunately take a longer time for the guests to queue in line. So this is one of these that allows you to uh, essentially go at your own pace. And as I was mentioning earlier, I think having this key feature in the center of the pavilion that focuses on the identities of these specific women is a great approach. And you could, this is a key feature. You could contrast this key feature with, say, the laboratory bar inside the Russian pavilion or the LED field inside of China. And I think all of those are spectacular key features. But in this case, here at Angola, the difference is it's personalized. And I think some of the Expo pavilions uh, failed a bit because they didn't allow for that personalization. You, you felt the monolithic nature of a culture as grand as it was and its traditions and its people, but you never got the life histories of the actual people. And I really appreciated that Angola took this approach because I think it was unique and it's also important because of, of course, every culture, as much as it's about the great traditions and foundations that we learn about at the Expo, it's about all of us. And social change certainly begins with each of us as individuals. So for me, a very important message here at Angola at the 2015 Expo from the uh, Angola Pavilion. And um, I have to say a really fine space. Um, you know, it's one of the ones where you walk 
seemingly forever up on um, different levels. And I like the fact that the center of the pavilion has this, uh, so I'll show you some video here, this video wall with um, everyday people, citizens from different walks of life. And this is a, a focus, you know, a focus on identity. And I think that a lot of the um, other pavilions don't really do this. They sort of leave people out, strangely enough, with all the focus on flora and fauna and uh, other things that are part of the folk life of any culture or nation. But, you know, the fact that they included this, I think, is, is quite innovative. As well, I think there was a good use of modern technology with traditional uh, indigenous uh, design and uh, features, architecture, material culture, and so forth. So there certainly was a lot to see um, inside the um, Angola Pavilion here at World Expo 2015 Milan. Hope you enjoyed the video feature today here outside the uh, Angola Pavilion at World Expo Milan 2015. Please come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.